Hi, welcome to part three of our liquid transitions tutorial. In part two, we completed the liquid transition effect, but it only works going from scene one to scene two. In part three, we're gonna make it so that way it works going from scene two to scene three, and scene three back to scene one. Let's jump in. You might be thinking, okay, now we gotta duplicate all this work onto scene two and scene three. And, and yes, that's true. However, it's not gonna take us as much time as we need to do it. Let's copy all of these layers here. So here, if we, if we close all these, I'm just gonna hold down shift. So click the first one, hold down shift, click the bottom one, control C or command C on your Mac. And then I'm gonna go to scene two and I'm gonna say edit, paste with interactions. So this will not only paste those layers, but all of the triggers associated with those shapes as well. So we're, our, our work is gonna be mostly done for us. So I'm gonna go here and I'm going to edit paste with interactions and you can see it added all of our stuff in here now there's a few things we're going to need to tweak in here to make this work um, the other thing that you may or may not have noticed that it didn't take over the start trigger so when you paste with interaction it will paste the layers and all of the triggers associated with those layers the start trigger is associated with the scene it's not attached to any of these layers uh, so you're not going to have the start trigger come over so we're gonna have to copy that as well command c over here and I like to have my start trigger at the top of the stack it doesn't matter where you have it that's where I like it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the first trigger paste which will put it right underneath and just drag it so it's right at the top so we have to fix these things in orange so let's do that first we want to move the drag circle the jump will not go from we'll go in this one it'll go from scene uh, one to, or scene two to scene three so I select scene three uh, I have to select the layer, current scene. Oh, let's rename that. So that's current scene. All right, so we want to, this is going to move current scene. And that's all of the orange. The other thing we need to do is we need to replace all of the scene two. Um, components with scene three one so I'm gonna expand these down and let's take that and we're gonna use this now you can do this this is a really really cool thing you can do because these components are the same size it makes it really easy to just swap them out so all of these ones all the next scenes are gonna be scene three so I'm gonna change them from scene two to scene three and then this one same thing scene two scene three scene two scene three and then I have to change my masks so they're all the right color now so let's grab this orangey red color and we're gonna change that mask that mask and that mask make it orangey red oops there we go and our reflected shapes we don't want to be white we want them to be purple so let's just grab this purple color now if we go back to scene one we should be able to go from scene one to scene two and now we've got scene two is now active. And if we do that, we're, we're going to scene three, but scene three does not have anything in it yet. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna copy all of the items, go to scene three, edit, paste with interactions. And let's rename this to say current scene. And let's fix all of our We've got this one, move current scene. So let's choose current scene. And let's change our components to be now, our next scene will now be scene one. So we're gonna change that to scene one, that one to scene one, and this one to scene one. Let's change our masks to be the white color. So that's it's light gray, it's not quite white. Let's change that mask, this mask, and that mask all gonna be this light gray color. And our reflected masks, well, the reflected shape, it's not quite a mask, is going to be this red color. So now we should have, oh, we didn't, we didn't take over our start trigger. So our start trigger is responsible for pulling in our drag circle, but we didn't bring that in. So let's make sure that we copy our start trigger. So let's take this, we'll go to scene three, pass, paste our start trigger, move it to the top, and make sure we have the right item selected here. Okay, there we go. 
We go from, okay, that didn't work quite right because our jump is not going to the right scene. So let's fix our jump. Should be going to scene one, not scene two. There we go. And we've got Eugenie's fantastic, oh, 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 what happened there? Okay, I think I know what's going on here. Uh, when we do our jumps, we need to configure them to reset the scene. So the, the first time through, everything worked right. So we go from scene one to scene two, works great. Scene two to scene three, works great. Scene one, now back to scene two. And you see we're getting that weird uh, jump thing that's happening. And the reason why that's happening is we're not resetting our scenes. Everything is in the final position, not at the beginning. So what we want to do is in our jump, we need to configure the jump to reset the scene. So it will force it to restart. And we'll do the same thing for the jump here and the same thing for this one. So that way, every time we jump, it is now going to trigger that, re that scene to restart from its beginning. Now let's try and preview this. So we move, there we go, scene one to scene, that's it. now this is scene one, and so we're going to scene two, going to scene three, back to scene one. There we go, and it's working just nicely. There you go, easy as pie. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, just check out the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.